Well, business leaders have welcomed the government's innovation plan. Some say much more needs to be done to give our science champs of tomorrow a better chance. Students from the University of New South Wales have just smashed the world's speed record for a solar-powered car. But their backers say without better support from industry and government, job opportunities for young scientists may dry up. Neil Woolridge reports. <laughs> If a group of bright young sparks have their way, this will be the future of motoring. Everywhere we go, people look at the car, they, they just they ask what it is, they want to get in it, they want to drive it. Um, it's a real crowd pleaser. The SunSwift was built by 60 undergraduates from the University of New South Wales, mostly from the engineering and business faculties. The university has run the project since 1996 to compete in the World Solar Challenge, and EVE is the fifth model. EVE was designed um, to be a, a sort of a practical solar car that you'd really want to drive. But we wanted a car that you, know, it, you, know, you could drive to work, that people would you know, stare at in the street and think that's really cool. Eve has reached a top speed of 132 kilometres an hour and the team recently smashed a 26-year-old world record for solar cars, averaging 100 kilometres an hour over a 500-kilometre journey. So this is the back of our car. It's basically the electrical powerhouse of our car. At slower speeds, Eve is powered entirely by the sun, but to go faster or to drive at night, a battery kicks in, which takes around 20 hours of sunlight to charge and gives a driving range of 500 kilometres. Say for an average day to, you know, trip to work, you know, 20 k's, 50 k's, up to about 60 kilometres an hour, you can run just on solar power. Rob Island says the 40 hours a week the team puts into the car can hurt their university marks, but what they've learned from the project can't be taught in the classroom. What I'm, a lot of employers are recognising is that when you're part of projects like the SunSwift, you do learn a lot, of, you know, you learn a lot more than just your degree. It enables you, you, know, you interact a lot with industry, you apply what you learn in your degree in a real fashion, you're building real things. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, students get to learn so much. They're, they're researching, they're learning as they go in, in practical way um, and building um, a narrative for the future of a, a renewable industry. Bob Sharon's Green Global Solutions brought the SunSwift to the All Energy Trade Fair. But notwithstanding the federal government's new $400 million plan for investment and innovation, he says Tony Abbott needs to do more to foster the renewable industry. At the moment, the sector is a little bit weak, but I believe we're, we're building a platform for the future that will make it much stronger. All right, here we go. Well, unlike a lot of solar cars you might have seen in the past, the SunSwift is actually pretty comfortable on the inside. Still, I can't imagine taking a young lady to the drive-in in this jalopy. Hopefully by March next year, March, April, we'll have this car fully road registered with the RMS. Uh, pretty much everything in the car, apart from the shell, needs to be redesigned. But you get the feeling that will be just a minor bump in the road for this team of rising engineering stars.